for, um, so go ahead and uh, approve or confirm that. Um, this is now getting into how we're gonna do the presentations and I'm recording it so that I can uh, share it with other people who may have wanted to be here, but they couldn't. Okay, so if you look in the chat right here on Zoom, I've um, put a link in the chat. You can click on it. It's gonna take you directly to the Facebook group. That um, video that you watch in the Facebook group is just an example of how I do presentations. So it's my presentation style, how I open up, how I engage the, the uh, viewers. And it's also going to give you uh, an opportunity to see the presentation as far as the slides. Okay, um, I am going to share my screen and show you a Canva presentation and how you can put your presentation together in Canva, or you can use PowerPoint or whatever you have chosen to use. Uh, Jeffrey, the presentation that you showed me with the slides, that's perfect. So mm -hmm. uh, that PowerPoint? Yep, yeah, that's PowerPoint. Okay, yep, so that's PowerPoint, perfect. All right, so uh, for the presentations, I am going to introduce you first. So expect about five, maybe about five to seven minute introduction. Um, I am going to uh, say your name, I'm gonna read your mini bio, and we are going to go over three to five questions. Now I'm going to, I'm putting together, um, I'm gonna share my screen now, I'm putting together a, um, uh, and you hear my children in the background, excuse me. <laughs> they enter worlds all together and they play like Minecraft and Roblox and things like that. So that's another really great thing that technology does that we're taking advantage of right now on Zoom because it's like a conglomerate of people, conglomerate of minds, and that's much more powerful than just one person. Um, so you'll hear them in the background. So just excuse that. Um, when I share my screen, I'm going to show you the camera presentation and how you can put those slides together. But the five, three to five questions that I'm going to ask, I will get them to you beforehand so that you can go over them and, you know, figure out what you want to say and how you want to, but I'm not going to be reading um, the questions and I don't want you to read your responses that you've gone over. I want it to be more conversational style. After um, we go over those few questions, then I will... Um, remove myself from the Zoom. You'll only be able to see my small little thumbnail up in the corner, and then you'll take over from there. Um, after um, you do your presentation, which should be between 25 and 30 minutes, I'll come back on. I am still going to have to still be there to, you know, listen in and, and make sure that I catch you as you are um, finishing up your presentation, but then I'll come back in and then we'll close out together. So, um, during that 25 to 30 minute presentation, you are to go ahead and add in any promo that you want to do as far as getting the people back to your opt-in. Your freebie is, is what I really want you to kind of promote so that you can get them onto your uh, email list. They can become subscri subscribers and then you can start building or continue building your, your subscriber list. From there, you can then email them and you know talk to them as you, you would anyone else who subscribed to your list. But that's gonna give you an opportunity to have people um, get off of the Zoom and My Kartra Summit platform so that they'll be on your platform, your own digital real estate or wherever you want to have them. Um, another suggestion that I have, this is uh, sort of related to the presentation, but it's a little off topic. You want to have somewhere where you can pull them together. So even if you have a website, that's great, but it's really not a place where you can have everyone meet. Even Zoom is awesome if you are going to have um, uh, weekly sessions or monthly sessions where everyone can join. But I would say to um, perhaps consider starting a Facebook group where you can pull everyone together and have all of them there. And then you can do um, trainings there. You can have speakers come in. You can interview people. So all of this, this doesn't have to be done before the summit, but it's just uh, to kind of get you um, in the mode of maybe having somewhere that you can have them because you definitely want to have the list, the email list when social media isn't working. But when social media is working, you want to have them in a place where you can kind of pull them together. That's one of the places where I go for most of 90% of my leads 
and I can turn them from cold to warm to hot. I can launch everything that I'm doing in my group. I get all my focus groups and, and all the feedback and surveys done, polls in the group. So that's um, something that I wanted to say about that. Um, uh, where was I? Okay, so uh, I come in and I will close out the presentation and then that's that. After that Zoom recording is done, um, I'm then going to take that recording, my two uh, oldest children here, they're helping with the editing of all the videos, and we've already started with um, one of the intro videos being done. So when the finalized presentation is completed, it will be the intro video to your presentation that just highlights the summit, get everybody engaged and you know excited about the presentation to come. Then it'll move into me introducing you, us having a, a small a mini conversation, a quick conversation, your presentation, me closing it out, and that's the end of, of your, your presentation for the summit. So all together, it will probably go about 45 minutes um, in total. So your, your presentation part will be 25 to 30 minutes. If you go over 30 minutes, that's fine. I just want to make sure you can kind of gauge it. So if you're like 32 minutes or something like that, you don't have to cut stuff out. You know, just kind of gauge how many slides you need. And, you know, maybe go through it a couple of times and then see, you know, if you should slow down on this part or, or um, increase your speed on this part uh, and, and just kind of work through it. But for the most part, I, you all are professionals. I already know. The people that are part of the summit, they you have your stuff together and you've done this before. So it's pretty much the same thing that you've been doing. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Did you all look in the chat um, on, on Zoom and see the link? I see the link. Okay. And is it working? Were you able to click on it and take it two opens? Minutes? Okay, perfect. All right. Just want to make sure it works. All right. So we're going over to um look at oh okay that's fine i can't minimize okay so let me go to let me try it this way um i'm getting ready to pull up and this is one um my son and i were working on he still has some stuff to do um but since it's already up on my screen i figure i should kind of show you all just to give you a little um taste test of what's to come but um, he's gonna go back in. He has some stuff, something he said he still had to do with it, um, with the video. But this is one of the videos that um, we may use to introduce. He's gonna create um, a couple of them and then we'll choose which ones we think are, are more appropriate um, for the presentations. So let's look here, share sound and um, and I'm, before I get to Canva, I'm just going to show you the one of the intro videos that he's working on um, for us. saw the pictures pop up with the names and titles, he's going to go in and the exact uh, headshots that you all have um, on the uh, graphics that they did in the entrepreneur group, those will be the same headshots that he's going to put into your own little, I don't know what you call that slide thing, but when you come up and pop up and it has your name, he's going to do that for every speaker. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but that's the video. So he's going to go in and finish it up. And then once it's done, he's supposed to do up to three and then we'll choose.
but um, I think he's on track. The music isn't too hip hop ish and it isn't too kind of dull. It's like inviting for like what we want for the demographics because we have some younger people too who are now getting interested since they saw their images on social media. So I think that's really great because um, Jeffrey, you do the, the youth entrepreneurship and then my children, they have their segment that they're gonna be doing. So this right, is gonna be right. great. This is gonna be, okay, so I'm going to Canva now. And then um, what, while I'm going to Canva, what platform do you all plan to use for your presentations? I'm using Canva. I'm using uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. PowerPoint, PowerPoint. I think it's an engineering thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like engineer mathematical, right? <laughs> Victoria, are you still with us? She said she wasn't feeling too well. I was going to ask. Yeah, her. yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, cool. What platform are you using for your slides? Uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint, okay. All right, so let's go to... Well, maybe I should be on PowerPoint then. Okay. I, well, have you used PowerPoint? I've yeah, used I Canva it. too in the group um, as well. I'll probably be using PowerPoint though. Okay, yeah. I, use I can PowerPoint. use either one though. I've done either one. It really doesn't. Um, it's one, it one doesn't, better than it's the not other? harder to do one or the other for me. Nope. It's the, Jeffrey, it's the same, I think. I, um, okay. I think, I think you can have if there's more features available associated with PowerPoint. I think it's just me, okay. but I don't think it matters what we're using, whether you use Canva or not. What is your plan associated with what you're planning to do? Because you're going to be sharing your screen and we're going to be sharing ours. Right, right. Well, I was saying that maybe I should use PowerPoint to show you the example tonight. I'm using Canva for the pre for the summit. So yeah, I, I just like some of the graphics on Canva and I can kind of, it's a little bit easier for me to use with my, my children. So I'm, we're gonna be using Canva, but I was saying for tonight, maybe I should use PowerPoint in case you all have specific questions about PowerPoint. Um, but I just want to show Let's start you there. Is, is there anyone on the line that has any specific concerns associated with the utilization of PowerPoint? I think you all know so how to we use We don't have a problem. So you <laughs> okay, can just cool. use what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, right, so yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we will, we're going with, um, we'll go with Canva because I already have it up. That's going to be easy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here we go. All right, so. Okay, so you should be seeing the screen. All right, I just started with the title. The, um, the uh, title slide has the. Uh, an image on it. It has title and the date and things like that. You won't need the date. Don't worry about the date on your slide, your title slide. All you need is just the title or you can have the title and your image headshot or what have you, but you won't actually need the date because remember, it's going to be evergreen. So that's going to be something to keep in mind um, because it's going to go all year long. So try not to date your presentation um, and then trying not to date it is also going to be good for you when you want to use the presentation um, on your own. Maybe you want to use it next year around Christmas. So if you're talking about Thanksgiving or Easter or something, you know, people may think that that information is not relevant to, you know, the time or, or season. So just try not to date it as best you can. Um, and if you slip up or something like that, it doesn't have to be edited out. I'm just saying to kind of keep that in mind. All right, so as I go through um, my slides, I'm going to go really quickly. Um, I'm just going over the title again. This gives me an opportunity to engage the audience this particular slide because I'm asking them, you know, um, to comment with a live or replay. You will not need to do that for the summit because we won't have live commenting. The only time that people will be able to engage with us specifically is going to be on the live Q and A's that we're gonna do on the evenings of the summit. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, and then I'm going through, uh, there's another slide to kind of engage people. Um, this is a slide that is a segue into me talking a little bit about um, my family and, and getting them uh, to see my children. Usually if you talk about your family, show people that you're human, they're more likely to connect with you. So that's what I try to do with this slide. I always have a slide in there about being grateful um, and just uh, taking a, a moment to, to just up level your vibration. And then um, 
since this was a specific type of, it was a three day masterclass. So I had winners from my day two. You won't need to worry about that. Um, and then I went over it. Okay, so we're going to keep going. And now this is getting into the actual engagement section of the presentation where I want to kind of get the viewers thinking, you know, maybe engaging a little bit, um, making it more interactive so they're not just watching. So when you're doing your presentations, maybe you want to ask them a question or ask them to jot down two things and then pause for maybe 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds and give them a chance to write um, things down and then come back um, to your presentation. So these are um, some more slides. I'm telling them to comment, to kind of keep them engaged. I'm, I'm usually the type of presenter that is doesn't want my, my audience to be bored. So when I used to do a lot of live presentations, I would tell, you know, say, well, stand up if you believe, or, you know, what have, I would have them always doing something. When I was a teacher, I, same thing. Okay, so um, stand up. I want you on one foot if, you know, you think this, or on your left foot if you think this, or stand up on your right foot if you think this. And I would always have them moving. So I tried to um, do that virtually as well. Um, I have a quote in there. This is a quote from one of my favorite um, authors. Um, she since passed away, but um, th those quotes are really good. So if you want to put in a quote, a scripture, affirmation, um, something like that, that's really good. It can be your personal quote that's related to the presentation. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, and then just um, these are slides, more slides with the presentation. Um, so... Let's see. I still have them. Kind of just quickly. Um, um, I'm sorry. Is it okay if I ask you a question real quick? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So going back to the engagement slide, okay. and this is these are recorded presentations. How how is the engagement going to happen in there? Or is okay. it not? Perfect. Perfect. Yes, the engagement will happen because you're going to have them engage with their paper or something like that. For example, uh, okay, so you're doing marketing. I, I, I'm not. Well, you know what? That was yeah. Part we, of the we're going to talk we'll about that, that, right? <laughs> yeah, that was part of what we were supposed to be talking about. But okay. okay. Well, let me just use this as an example. So, say if you do um, uh, how to if you mean your... like give them an assignment or something to do with it, then I get it. I understand. That won't take a long time though. So for example, I'm, I'm going to do something right now. So um, I'm talking about marketing and it is in order to scale your business, this, that, and the other. Okay. You know, I'm supposed to be Victoria and this, that, and the other. You're my audience. Um, take two sec, take, take five seconds and write down three things you, you think it will take to hit $200,000 in the next year using Facebook ads. You know, and then take those five seconds and then they and then give them five seconds and then come back and say, OK, now that you had five seconds, let me fill you in on what it's really going to take. You know, was this on your list? And, you know, just have them like like they're really there, but they're not there. Does that make Got sense? It. Got it. OK, so, yep. All right. So I'm going back to uh, the presentation. And did you need me to go back to that slide or you're good? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. good? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, and then um, what I what I suggest as you're doing your presentation, um, just like you do presentations in the real world, um, and I know Tanya, you you know this like the back of your hand. Um, you're going to highlight key points. Those key points should be a slide. The thing that I suggest, don't put a whole lot on each of your slides. Just do like maybe um, keywords or, or key phrases and that'll help the, uh, the, the viewers to not be overwhelmed. So sometimes you'll see, I do this a lot. Um, where is it? I'm trying to skip through and see a slide that I do. Okay, for example, so this slide right here, so this is a testimonial slide, and this is a good segue into what I'm getting ready to talk to you all about. So I talked about a couple of people that I worked with, and then that next slide is sort of overlapping, and then the next slide is overlapping. So it's, it's a lot on the slide, but I started with something, 
And then there's another thought about it and then another thought about it. So it's a lot on the slide, but it's really not a lot all at once, okay? So that's my suggestion. The reason this is a good segue into what I wanted to talk about is because during your presentation, please, please mention clients that you've worked with. You don't have to say their names. You don't have to give personal information, but mention clients that you've worked with what they used that you're talking about and how they benefited greatly from what it is you're talking about. The reason you're doing that is because you are now putting the viewers into the mindset that, oh, she's presenting or he's presenting this and it didn't just work for her or him, it worked for other people and they have these results. So maybe it'll work for me. That's what I really want you all to do. You have 20 to 30 minutes at the end of your presentation, the last three to five minutes, you'll probably be doing promotion, getting people excited to get over to your subscriber list, pick up your freebie or what have you. But all throughout, I would say at least three times within 25, that 25 minute time frame, take at least 30 to 45 seconds to talk about a former or current client that was at one particular point which was not a so good point to be at before they met you and, and worked with you. And then talk about how, what you're talking about um, worked for them and what their great benefit was. So make sure you put um, that in your presentation. I would say at least three times. So three times, say, even if you went for like a minute talking about it, that's only three minutes, but you're giving people different examples of what worked for other people that's probably just like the people that are viewing the, the, the summit, the different presentations in the summit. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. I wanna show you. Okay, so I this, this area of the presentation, I did the, it was like an overlap of testimonials and then I went right into a quick video, okay? And then this video, was from um, one of the former clients. Is this the video? Oh, no, no, it's not a video. This isn't a video. This is just another one of uh, the testimonial slides. Um, but I do have some where there are videos, really, really short snippets, like 10, 15 second videos. Then I have some that are like one minute videos, depending on what the presentation is. So since it's a short presentation for us for the summit, um, if you do videos, make sure they're you know pretty quick um, just maybe five, 10 seconds, you know, it was great working with Tanya. She was amazing. This, that, and the other, or, you know, Victoria, um, her signature, her signature program was awesome for me. I was lost before and then blah, blah, blah. So see, make sure they're pretty quick. Um, and then I, I have a work, a workbook for this particular, uh, three-day masterclass. So this was the day's homework for them. We went over that and, um, I told them to kind of stick around in order to keep them engaged and make sure they watch the entire presentation. I always tell people to stick around to the end because I have something great for them. And then that great thing is the freebie to either opt in to my, um, so my uh, email list and get whatever freebie I'm given or is to join uh, my Facebook group so that they can get more training and, and be uh, amongst other like-minded individuals. Um, and then this particular day, this was the last day of um, the master class. So I was telling them about my book to bank boot camp. And then that's it. Uh, how did I close out this presentation? Um, this was the master class. So I gave away a vacation and then I um, opened the floor up for live Q&A. You won't have to open up for live Q&A. At this point, I would be coming back on. I'm turning my video back on and then I will be thanking you for your presentation. I will go over a little bit of what I got out of it, maybe one key point. And then I would ask maybe, you know, well, okay, this was an awesome presentation. I would say something along those lines, you know, what's the, what's the one thing you would want your viewers to leave with today? If they didn't learn anything else, what's the, the one thing that you would want them to leave with today? And then after you said, you know, responded, um, I would say, okay, well, then that ends our um, presentation from Victoria uh, this evening. If you want more information, you want to find out more about her freebie, definitely go and visit her website. And then I may repeat it or not or say, you know, um, uh, it won't be in the comments, so I would have to repeat it. And then um, we would end. And that's it. That is it. All right. So any questions at all?
any questions at all. I know Victoria, you wanted to talk about um, the event that we're doing on the 29th and it's, it's related because we have a presentation that we're doing. So um, this may be even good to talk about if you wanna stick around Tanya or Jeffrey, um, that's fine. But Victoria and I are gonna be working on a presentation for the 29th and you all are invited. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to come. It's free. It's going to be in Victoria's group. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, going live and monetizing. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So any questions? Jeffrey, you're muted if you're talking. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So if you wanted to just go ahead. Um, my main question, well, we could talk about the, um, the Wednesday event. Okay. Um, okay. I think I got a lot of. Um, I was really looking for my presentation. Um, I pretty much talk about like a couple things. I talk about um, performance and getting in, um, finding what your natural genius is, and right. and how to, you know, perform at high levels within that genius. And so I was looking at what to do for this particular summit because. Um, I'm usually talking about marketing and team development and, you know, building a team, training a team to, to execute, especially in this, um, well, pretty much only in the marketing realm. Mm -hmm. So that's really, I have a plan that I, like a growth plan that I de developed, which is, um, I call the PEP plan, is which is people, environment, and the processes. And the people side focuses on getting the right people in the right roles, the environment um, gets from structuring the environment for performers to actually perform because if it's a toxic environment, they're not going to perform at their best because you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. um, then the processes is, is really having a um, documented, proven framework for them to take people from cold um, strangers to repeat buyers. So when you have all three of those, um, it creates a very high performing team because my clients are usually CEOs or high performing entrepreneurs who are looking to free up their time because, when, you know, they got money, but no time right. and they struggle with getting the right people. Now in their minds, they think it's an external issue, which really is um, a lot of it is an internal issue that's, you know, neither here nor there. So I was looking at, okay, based on the summit, um, looking at if that, this doesn't seem like it's completely relevant unless I'm talking about it in terms of, like, well, I mean, you can tell me because, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm like, is this appropriate for the audience itself or should I focus on the, just the people side, because one of the things with the people side is um, a lot of people struggle with knowing what their genius is, what their superpower is, because a lot of times it gets stamped out of them in childhood. Right. That's one of the reasons they don't know they get their the things that they're so naturally great at. A lot of times they have, you know, family and family systems that look at it and there's like, oh, you're too this, or you're not, you're too much of this, too little of this. And that's something that we probably a lot of us struggle with. And um, it's a major problem because that creates people going into careers that they're not really aligned with for so many different reasons. And then it's just a snowball effect. So I could really just hone in on that part or, or I could do the whole shebang. So. So this is this is what I was thinking about. You have a wealth of um, uh, knowledge, wisdom, uh, experiences. So it's no way we can put everything into one presentation. So this is what I want you to think about. I have my own idea. I'm going to share it with you. But before I share it with you, this is what I want you to kind of um, think about. This is to highlight you and to get the viewers to the next step with you, okay? So I want all of you to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. 
No one's going to take anyone's clients or anything like that. So there's abundance everywhere. So think of it like this. When you're doing your presentation, it is all about you. And you want to entice them so much with the hors d'oeuvre that they want the full meal. They want the dessert. They want to um, just come to the house afterwards. You know, so that's what I want from you. So when you're talking about finding your superpower, you know, I love that. Mm -hmm. But your plan, from what we talked about, is to get people to your next ticket, your high ticket uh, program, and um, your you want to launch something new that you're working on as well. I have a fire getting ready to start. Hold on for just a second. Victoria, if you can hear me. Um, yes, I can hear you. Our presentations are aligned in that when I talk about um, uh, what entrepreneurs should do to, to, you know, to scale a business. First step that I talk about um, is, is that uh, they need to figure out what they're passionate about and build a business about, around their passion. Um, and the way that they figure that out is through psychological testing. So, right. you know, working in corporate America, I've, I've been exposed to a bunch of tools like Myers-Briggs and whatever, but I always talk to entrepreneurs about these different types of tools. And I'm like, take, take the time to, to get tested and figure out what you what your strengths and weaknesses are, what your, your likes and, and dislikes are. Uh, because, you know, if you want to be successful, pattern yourself after successful people, right? So well, that's what I teach. That's pretty yeah. much, and um, I, I teach them how to do that, which tests to take, which entrepreneurs to follow that match their particular genius, um, all of that. That that part is the first part, because when I talk about people, the first person I'm talking about is the owner. Yeah. When I'm yeah. talking in a business sense, um, yeah. I'm talking about them first and then everything trickling down from there. Yeah, but, the, but that, that first piece really is about figuring out what you're passionate about and building a business around that passion. Because, right. you know, if you, if you think about, you know, successful entrepreneurs, Steve Jobs, who, you know, Bill Gates, whoever, you know, if you sat, if you were able to sit down with them and have a 30 minute, 60 minute conversation with them, I can guarantee you one thing you take away from that conversation is they love what they do. Right? Exactly. Because they figured out what they're passionate about and they built the business around their passion, whether that's, you know, I love to code. I love to, you know, I love to, uh, to do hair. I love, you know, to, 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 you know, to make people up, you know, using makeup. I love, you know, whatever it is, I figured out what I love and I built a business around what I love. And because I love what I do, it permeates, you know, every core of my being and people are drawn to that. I, I use the analogy when I talk to entrepreneurs about, you know, when you're young and going out clubbing, you know, when, when, you know, let's say whatever town you're from and the town is irrelevant, you know, if all the clubs are on one strip, one, one, one road in town, you know, when you and your friends are driving in your car and going down that strip, figuring out what club do we go to, you're going to go to the club that has the longest line. Now that, that that's actually counterintuitive. It would make more sense to go to the club with the shortest line because you have a, a you know great chance of getting in that club. But human nature tells you go to the club with the longest line because obviously that's the best club because everybody's waiting, waiting in line to get in that club. That's, that, you know, so, so that, 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 that's where you end up, you know, migrating towards, you know, the same thing, you know, is true with entrepreneurship. It, it, when you love what you do and it permeates every soul of your being, people are naturally drawn to that, you know? And so, becoming successful as an entrepreneur when you're doing what you love to do and it, and it, and it manifests in everything you do becomes infinitely easier because people are just naturally drawn to you. They love to be around people that love to do what they do. Can I just add one thing for you as well? Oh, yeah, and, and, and I want to say this because I don't want to get off on a tangent. That is exactly what I'm teaching. So I don't want to go into this. That is pretty much what I'm teaching in that first step. My question wasn't on that because I don't want to take the time from everyone else um, because then we'll be on here all night. My question was basically, I could go on and on from all of that 
for the market itself, do I focus on just that one part? And Christina, you were talking about this. Focus on that one segment because that's one segment of the scaling. Then you, there's other segments. Um, because the name of my Facebook group is CEOs and Entrepreneurs Scaling with Ease. So that's the first part of what I typically teach in my process with right. um, Jeffrey, what you were talking about. The question was in the 30 minute time frame and whether talking to CEOs and this entire group would be relevant for this particular group or should I focus that part of the passion and all of that only because it's about family empowerment and because a lot of the issues get stamped, even with entrepreneurs, a lot of times, now I work with a lot of visionaries, so they're naturally a lot of times rebellious, mm -hmm. but a lot of times if you talk to them and listen to their stories, they had parents, they had upbringings where they tell them, oh, you're, you're all over the place, you're too messy, you're too this, you're too that, you're too this or that. And, and my focus, my whole question was focus on that aspect on how to build, um, how to not do this to your family and your children, how to naturally figure out, because I do start, I start with psychological testing, but then it goes beyond that. Can it I goes beyond thing? that because it will give you a psychological um, test will give you the one I use gives the general archetype, but then you're an individual within that. So there's a method of going through and really debriefing how this relates to you and your particular passions, because I'm a certain profile, but I'm not passionate about everything. So what makes me, what lights me up on top of my genius is also dealing with certain aspects of that. I love marketing. I love, anyway, um, that's not the point. <laughs> the whole point was we get really it. We get it. getting to the next step. That was when, because typically I have people go through uh, just a sim simple apply survey, like okay. six, you know, six questions that gets them straight on my list. I'll offer them and then based on how they answer the questions, then I'll give them the next steps. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty simple. It's just that if I don't focus on the marketing side and I send people to the apply, then I'll get everybody that is, um, not business oriented yeah, and I don't necessarily yeah. mind that it's just that's why I was kind of stuck on what to talk about as far as the presentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's for in in the audience I want to tailor it to the audience mm -hmm. so if you thought the entire one is fine I would just have to run through it really quickly to get everything done in 30 minutes which is fine um or what you thought would be the most appropriate Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, Jeffrey, I'm totally there, hundred percent with you on that. And, I, and my, you my my quick take is, you know, it's it's like we're not going to advertise. You, you you're not going to get an MBA, uh, uh, um, you know, at the Rise Conference, right, <laughs> you right, know, right. in the right. amount of time that we have. Right. Um, right. But we want we what we want to do is tell you what you can benefit from by getting an mm -hmm. MBA. And then if you actually want to get an MBA, now you need to you, you need to come back and, and 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 engage Victoria at a deeper level, right? Amen. Amen. Tanya, you were getting ready to say something? Yeah. Just wanted to give Victoria just an idea of something that I've consistently done that has been helpful for me because all of us sound like we have the same elements that we share. I have a five-week course that I eventually want people to get to. It's my signature course. It's navigated around divorcees, but divorcees are not the only ones to participate in it. One mm -hmm. segment of my course is credit discussion. Mm -hmm. You highlight a story about your person. You go into one part of the course. You mm -hmm. direct them to where you're headed next, which is what Christina has been sharing with us. Because with this element of what I'm bringing to the table, when I tell my story, because I teach what I have lived, I already gravitate to the person that I want. So I don't have to talk about them. All of us seem to have an assessment. I am a certified organizational assessment coach with core strengths. That's a key component of my assessment, but I'm not talking about that. If I give you the story of how I got where I am, the people that I'm looking to receive will mm -hmm. come in. And the mm -hmm. piece that is a big problem part mm -hmm. that I'm solving, which is credit. Credit has to deal with your mindset and all the various things, but there yeah. will be 
a part of what I sell because it's a small segment, again, a small segment that leads into a larger platform, but it's something that I can take out of that larger platform. And then when we get them off of the RISE Summit into our individual conversations, I'll know from my discussion with them about their credit, whether they need to walk into the bigger five-week program, but they won't be surprised. Like you were trying to figure out, will they be surprised when they get there? No, they won't be surprised when they get there because the only people that are going to want to join you from the summit are the people that you're directed to for that small part. And then you can expand there to help give you a support. <laughs> Victoria, that's all I wanted to share. Yeah, I oh, yeah. I, 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 I think, thank you both so much. Um, yeah. I was mainly looking at if my, my um, whatever, my presentation needed to be tweaked for the particular audience. The, the only thing I, I would, that was the question really. Um, so Victoria, real quick, the, when you're concerned that what I'm hearing is your main concern is time frame, pretty much because it's a short period of time and you got a lot that's going to go into it. So well, I would say it's my main concern is who is the audience? That's that's really who is the audience? I can tailor it around that to make, make it fit. Because like I said, I'm usually talking to CEOs, entrepreneurs who are dealing with teen and time issues. Right. But if that is not relevant to the audience of the RISE Summit, I need to pivot it a little bit and focus on something else and then still find a way to segue them into what I'm talking about next. So that was my concern. The time I can work with it, where to send them next, not an issue. Okay. It was mainly an aud target audience issue to where I'm speaking to something that's irrelevant relevant to them. Okay, so what I jotted down was this. I put both, <laughs> which may make it <laughs> difficult. But listen to me first. This is this is where I'm coming from with this because from the people who have expressed, and now we haven't even done, just like Jeffrey mentioned earlier, we haven't even started to really promote. I'm just promoting pretty much in the Facebook group. And then I think Anthony shared uh, one post of the children, the children's graphic on his Instagram. Okay, so the inquiry that I've gotten in my DMs on Facebook from the people in the group and some of the responses that Anthony has gotten has been from people who already have businesses, but they want to now bring on their children or their husband, or the husband wants to have his wife be a part of it. So I initially showed you all the demographics of my Facebook group, because that's what I had to go on um, as far as it being 71% women, um, mostly United States. And you remember the demographics I showed you during the presentation, right? So that's what we had to go on. But a lot of times in marketing, you all already know this, when you start to actually market your message and your, your mission, your copy sometimes draw people in that are the ideal people for what you're actually talking about. So that's kind of why we have my son doing several different uh, videos and things like that, because the demographics of the people are kind of changing from what I initially thought it was going to be. I thought that it was gonna be people who were just starting businesses or they wanted to start a business. But I mean, we have been overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the, the messages and, and DMs have been from people that already have businesses, but they don't know how to transfer their business to their children because their children aren't in the business yet. Or they don't know how to bring their spouse on board because they don't have their SOPs that you probably talk about in your processes part, maybe, yeah. um, how to document. Am I kind of on track a little bit? Yeah. So it, you're basically saying a lot of them are the business owners who are trying to build a team with their own family, basically. It's, I wouldn't say it in those exact words because I don't know for sure, but that sounds good. <laughs> Okay, we can work on the title. <laughs> oh, right, right, because that what what I'm what I'm seeing from you is it's it's like it's a wide spectrum because people do need to find out what their superpower is. They need to know what their genius is so that they will be able to perform to the top of their capabilities. 
They also need to know how to build a team because we don't want to create jobs for ourselves. Now, I know some virtual assistants, you know, and service providers, you know, they really want to do it on their own, but there's no way you can scale like that. So for you, uh, Victoria, you're, that's what you do. You teach people how to create these teams so that they can scale and be that, you know, exceptional leader. So I think all of that needs to be incorporated in there somehow, but just. Okay. Yeah. I, I just didn't know if the, the, the market was primarily business owners or if they were not, if they were not business owners then, and they were not trying to grow and scale then I would need to modify my presentation to speak to if they, if the majority or if, well, I guess some of them, I mean, by default, a few, some would be business owners or looking for that. Right. But then even the ones who are just starting, they, they may eventually. So this is, this is something that I, I learned that I'm thinking about this when I used to be a teacher, a lot of times when I was first hired at a particular school to write a curriculum, they would always tell me the test scores of, you know, the students in the inner city and, you know, this school was tough. And I was at one of the toughest schools, the Mel Middle School in Baltimore City Public Schools. Uh, and when I went in, I didn't look at any of the test scores. They would try and show me I had folder after folder. I had emails and I wouldn't look at any test scores. I went in and I treated them like they were gifted and talented. Their test scores rose because God first, but secondly, because forget those test scores. Those exactly. tests weren't necessarily made for you anyway. So that's my belief. But right now, right here, this is what we got. And I want you to be passionate about it. I'm going to stand on the desk. I'm going to get crazy. I'm going to make you excited about lighting this Bunsen burner. And then we're going to get these scores up. I had people staying after school because they were excited about the content which was not supposed to be content for them. You see what I'm saying? So uh -huh. you may get people who are just starting their business, but they want to start their business the right way and join your program and you can build them up to that point. I'm not saying that they're your ideal client at all because I know you they aren't your ideal client. But what I am saying is just teach the content that is going to lead them to your next step. And then the people that are supposed to get it I believe are going to get it. Is, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That was that. Oh. Christine, Christine, also, um, this is the first Rise Summit. Is that correct? This is the first Rise Summit, yes. Okay, so Victoria might, you know, with this being the first, there, there's there going to be a lot of demographic information that we're not going to be able to get with this first one. We'll get it with the second, but not right. with right. the first. Going into the second, right, right. I would suggest taking is that what you have to offer is, and what we all have to offer is tremendously valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but where, as an entrepreneur, or as an individual, you know, as a human being, where, you know, where, where you begin to really understand how the world works is understanding not what you know, but what you don't know. And understanding how to be, begin to craft strategy based on what you don't know, because now you know what you need to learn. Um, mm -hmm. you probably run into a lot of people who don't know what they, they know and, and, uh, you know, are coming to you because, you know, they, they you know, it's like, I, I need to learn this because I don't know this, but mm -hmm. there are much more people that don't know what they don't know, but society forces us into this behavior of, I want to pretend I know everything because I don't want to look stupid. Right. Um, but there are a lot more people, infinitely more people that don't know what they need to know. Um, and so we, what we need to do as professionals is, you know, basically educate them on what they don't know, you know, and, and so that they become, you know, much more productive as entrepreneurs or whatever, you know, understanding now that, you know, you're not going to be great at everything. It's more important to know what you don't know. Because at that point, you, you, you know, if you don't understand, you know, if you don't understand what you're not good at, what, what you don't want to do, at least you now know that. You now know you need to outsource that. Outsourcing can be done when you hire internal employees or use external contractors. But now you, you understand, okay, I, I understand what it takes to succeed. I understand what I can do. I understand what I need to hire to, to help me get done. 
and now I can get everything done and be successful. And that's that's one thing that I was going to say as well, um, Victoria, with um, with your pep, because that's where you want to take them anyway. They're going to need to know the right people in the right role. They're going to need to know how to build the team, period. Because most often when, when entrepreneurs are starting out, even with authors that I work with, um, when they're publishing their, their book, they want to write the book. They want to edit it themselves. <laughs> Come on, man. You can't do all of that. They need to know the right people. They need to know the right roles. And they need to know their role, okay? You know how it was a saying, stay in your lane. They really need to know, no, you cannot do everything. Well, you can, but you're not going to do everything exceptionally well. Exactly. So you, when you talk about your pet, your signature, you know, concept, I mean, giving them a taste test of that, I'm telling you. Okay. I so like I'll that Because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't presenting something and people are like, what does this have to do with me? That was my main concern. Like, but what I does think this have to do with me and... I, I don't you're care. But, it I don't down, know. though. You're, you're planning oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. it, right? When you condense it. Right, right, right. Okay. And 30 minutes is fine for that because I need to get it down anyway because the whole goal is just to get them to the next step. Um, so th that's totally fine. It was mainly I didn't want to present something that nobody needed. <laughs> right. but, but, but for this particular that, that, audience. That, that, that's where using those case studies comes into play where, where right. you can say, hey, here's someone like you. Yep. That used what I gave them. Here's how it, how it positively impacted what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, right. Do you, do you already have those um, worked into the presentation? Like cl client testimonials, case studies, and things like that? Or do you have to put a couple? Well, this, is, this is what I teach in general. So it's okay. not a new presentation. I was just wondering if I needed to pick to rework the presentation for okay. this particular audience, but it doesn't sound like I need to. So that was yeah, really, yeah. Okay. so I'm good. I mean, it was, that was my question. Do I need to rework it for this audience? Awesome, okay. But I'm so sorry, thank you so much. I just want, I want to get to everybody. Yeah, you're, you're, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, yeah, but, but, but Victoria, I'm, I'm guessing there are going to be more people in the audience who don't know why they need to, to hear what you have to say. What's so important too. for you it is make them understand why they need yep. to hear what you have to say. Yeah, right? what you have to say is important, important. and it's, it's important to them becoming successful in doing whatever it is they want to do, whatever that is. Yeah, amen. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, I th I think you're you're good, at, and this helped to um, I think it helped to answer some questions as well for for time frame for audience because during the presentation that I gave to bring the speakers on board, it was the demographics that I had for the Facebook group. But as you know, going into the other groups and people coming into the group, you know, different times throughout the week and, and throughout the rest of the month, they're different <laughs> than the demographics I showed. So um, this is uh, an eye opener in that sense because the demographics are gonna change. And by the end of the summit, We'll be able to go over, you know, okay, who showed up, you know, where were they business owners, were they, you know, no business at all, were they nine to fivers, and then we'll be able to go over the analytics and stuff for that later on for the, the second one, like Jeffrey was talking about. Um, but natural genius is still important. So if you want to throw that in a little bit, that's fine too. But I would well, say that's, that's part of the process. It's the first part of the process. It's just whether I stop there. No, that part is part of the process, the genius and the passion. That's the people part. You were talking, saying they were two separate ones. So that's already- No, it was whether I was going to splinter it out and only leave that part. Yeah. That way it was more, um, it was, okay. it was okay. related to a broader audience because we're talking about family empowerment. And that's so true. I was saying, that's we're true. only talking about family empowerment and everything. That part, I can just- only speak to that part mm -hmm. um, or I could do the entire thing because if I see it doesn't matter to me because I'll do the whole presentation but if someone's like you know I don't have a business I'm not looking at a business they might not get that part the genius part where it really applies to other but I also don't want everybody um, um, going to the next step because 
um, so whatever. Not, so. Everyone's not ideal. Got it. Everyone got is it. not ideal. So my freebie and everything still will be a part of my target audience. Good. It's just a matter of, um, and if they want to connect with me on just that part, then we'll figure that out. That was, okay. that was the question. I can go, I can go 30 minutes on just that part alone. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, all right. So you basically have the presentation already together. You're just going to condense it a bit and then keep the same, um, uh, I guess, uh, information in about uh, natural genius, your yeah. testimonials and case studies and stuff like that. You'll keep in there to, to spark interest and then you'll just shorten it basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll just keep it there. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank um, you. Jeffrey, do you have any questions before I talk to Victoria real quick about the 29th event that we're doing? I do not. You know, okay, cool. You can hang out with us, that's fine. Um, but I, this is something good that, that you may want to hear too, um, Jeffrey, or, or maybe not. But um, uh, Victoria, the last monetized event, uh, go live and monetize that we did, I had uh, the presentation, I did the presentation at the end. And then I went over um, equipment and all that kind of stuff. So what I did this time for yours, and I'm, I'm going to create the slides for them between tonight and tomorrow. I took it back to when I was in school um, as a teacher writing curriculum, and I came up with a new, like a new thing. So this is revised for you, for you. So it's the five E's of monetization, right? So I don't know if you all know about the five E lesson plans. But the 5E e lesson plans, you break your the teacher's lesson plan into five parts, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So I've taken the Facebook Live and Instagram Live monetization presentation, and I put it all into these five E's. So that's going to be like the new presentation style. So if you see like a little difference in like the song, like she did not show that slide the last time we did it. That's because this is like the new and approved version for you. So it's going to be the five E's of monetization. And then you can use this on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or, or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to tell you that. Awesome. Awesome. And I also need the graphic that you did um and you placed it i think it's on your cover um it's on the cover for your um yes for your facebook group i would like a copy of that so that i can post it in my group and have the link to your facebook group on that post so that i can try and get people over you know at least for the presentation it's ceos in my facebook group and business owners so you may be able to get some of those people to to want to join your group too Okay, that sounds good. I'll get that over to you. Okay. I was trying to put it in the chat just now, but I think I, I moved it somewhere. So I'll just um, send it to you in WhatsApp. Let me see the chat. Okay, yep, that's fine. Um, I don't see. Okay, so yeah, splintering. I have to go. Okay, yep. Okay, good. And sorry. Oh, no, you didn't take up too much time. Okay, cool. All right, so um, yeah, you can send that to me in, in WhatsApp. And then um, I believe that's it. Uh, we're on for the 29, 730. Or was it seven? Yes. No, seven. Well, 7.30 because you said 7.30. So <laughs> you said that was the, the earliest you could do. So we that's 7.30 is what it is now. <laughs> well, hold on. I got it on my calendar. And and how much time? Do you th you think you're going to do about 30 minutes? Because your last presentation was pretty short. It was straight to the point. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So, you doing 20, 30 minutes or less or I think 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I, it's not that long. It's not that long at all. Yeah. Yours, yours was short. It was straight to the point and, um, yeah. And I'll probably give a bonus at the end, um, or something. Are you doing the wheel, the, the giveaway wheel? I don't know. Okay, um, well, I, I'm not trying to, to suggest that or encourage you to do it. I was just asking because you said you wanted to do a giveaway. I remember you saying that, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're just going to say, you can just say it. You don't have to use that. That will is a bit cumbersome, especially if the people aren't there. Well, that's, <laughs> like, that's you, what I was concerned because 
while people are registering, them actually showing up and then having to yeah. um to to go through that whole like it might be just based on what the way Coach T did it, where she just had them drop comments and, and somebody pick up whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or once you do, do the wheel, or I could have an assistant on to do the wheel or whatever, then I don't know, but I would just keep it simple because keep it simple. Keep it simple. I would keep it simple and say drop emojis, drop comments. That way, at least I know who's there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I can um, go from there. But I, I wasn't planning on doing the wheel for that reason. Okay, awesome. I think it works. Um, I will, I think, um, what, Tuesday, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon, I'll maybe text you something on WhatsApp if I have any questions. Um, but I mean, I think we're good. I'm just going to show up um, when you get me the link uh, on Zoom, and then I will be there. If you need my help with anything, just let me know. Like if you need me to help behind the scenes or something, just let me know, because I, I've made myself available um, for all of that time. So from 7.30, I have 7.30 to 9.30 on blocked out, even though you said it's going to be like an hour, just in case. So okay, perfect. Yeah, no, I true unless unless they get really happy with the questions and stuff. I <laughs> I budgeted an hour. Okay, so are you doing? Are you sending them somewhere else afterwards, or is this just to kind of get them re-engaged in the group? This really is just re-engagement, but um, the bonuses I would um I would have them do something to get the bonuses. Get the um, bonus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you want to get them to join the waitlist for the summit? Because once they join the waitlist for the summit, they'll be aware of the summit. And then when you get your affiliate link, once the tickets go live, you'll be mm. able to post that in the group and they'll already be aware of what's going on. I like that. No, I hadn't thought about that. So I like that. That may be something to think about. And my husband said that we should go up on the prices for the tickets, the regular price tickets. And I said, um, well, I'll think about it because the regular price tickets are only going to be on for the two weeks before, like a week and a half, two weeks before. We're going to really try to get everybody in on the early bird pricing. So we're doing the fast action um, pricing for about a week. Then we're going to do early bird pricing for, for I think it's four, four weeks. And then the last week and a half, two weeks will be the regular pricing. Excuse me for just one second. Um, okay, so yeah, so early bird pricing is going to be a, a, about a week. Uh, I'm sorry, fast action pricing about a week, early bird pricing for about four weeks. And then the regular pricing is only going to be about um, a week and a half, two weeks before um, the 21st of February. So um, after I told him what, what you all are doing, and like he He's always out on the road. So I'm pretty much master my, uh, mining, minding this thing with our masterminds, our children. Like they are so business savvy. It's like crazy. They just beyond me. And, you know, I have a VA and then I have the, uh, I have a gentleman doing website and then I have um, someone also assisting um, me with the, the summit. Uh, you know, Bailey Richard, Victoria from Russell Brunson and them. Okay, so he hopped off. Yeah, he posted that he he had to go. Oh, okay, okay, cool. But um, Bailey Richard, so I'm in that um, that course as well. So, um, I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm not fearful, but I just really want people to to take advantage of the summit. So when when he said to go up on the regular pricing, I was like, okay. Um, we can easily do that. We can say whatever the price, you know, we want, but I said in, um, how much is the fast action at the regular pricing? Um, in the early bird. Okay. So we got, um, I don't know what's going on with my eyes. Uh, we got fast. The fast action is, um, we're doing bronze, um, bronze, silver, and gold pricing. Um, and it's 297, 497, 697. That's the fast action. Then it goes up after a week to early bird, 497, 697, 997. 
And then about a week and a half, two weeks before um, the event, it goes up to um, before, oh, I'm sorry, that was before, before the summit, 497, 697, 997. And then um, right before, which is regular pricing, that's this over here, that's going to be 497, 997, 1997. And then after the summit, the evergreen pricing, I have it at twelve ninety seven. So, okay. so those are the price. Those are like extremely reasonable prices. <laughs> but he was like, people may think that the prices are so low for for fast action that it's unbelievable. They don't. They may believe that they're not going to get whatever you're saying you, they're supposed to get out of it. I was like, okay, may, may what? I mean, but that is some that is true sometimes. Sometimes the price can be too low. People are like, man, whatever, that you're gonna get a bunch of crap. But I don't think that's the way that we're advertised, and I'm working on the copy now. So well, I don't I think, think yeah, I think especially now when they see that okay, after this time it's going to these prices, then it's like it creates the FOMO. And the thing is, like, I mean, this is the first one you get to test. You just have to test these things because you don't know. But right. when you do the first one, if you say, okay, it's it goes start from 297. If you don't get now, it's going to be 697 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then it creates that even if seeing right. just being able to see where it's going up creates right. that anxiety or, you know, that's not what we right. want to create, but creates that. FOMO to Perfect. say, you, you know, so you might get more at the lower pricing and then the later, but that's fine. Right, 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 right. So it's so, just that psychological effect. Right. I, and I agree. And then another thing too is um, if we do get to a point where like pricing, we don't see any more ticket sales moving and things like that. I saw um, a millionaire, his name is... Um, I forget his name. He works with the CEOs, uh, CEO circle. And um, he was trained under R Russell Brunson and a couple of other big name people. And what he did, um, I'm on his email list. So what he did, he was in the middle of his regular pricing. So he did early bird and regular pricing. Regular pricing was going on and maybe ticket sales weren't what they, he expected them to be or whatever. I don't know the inside details, but I got an email from him that said for 24 hours only, we taking you back to the early bird pricing. So get your tickets now, blah, blah, whatever. And then um, I liked it. I liked that email and I saved it. I was like, maybe we can use this. You know, it doesn't have to be because ticket sales aren't moving. It could be just because. Maybe if something happens and um, I'm trying to think of how to work that in with the copy where I come in and say, you know, um, help me celebrate, you know, and, and to show you how much I appreciate you, you know, we're taking the price down or whatever. I don't know what we're going to do yet, you know, but I, I'm thinking about using something like that because it really worked. I actually bought <laughs> I bought it the evil because of it. So I'm like, it works, you know? Right. Um, and then I ended up joining his coaching program um, and then, um, why can't I think of his name? Oh my God. Neil Davis, Neil Davis. And, um, I ended up joining his coaching program for, um, about a week and, um, yeah, he's really good. He does his presentation styles a little bit different than mine, but, um, he, he's, he's up there and he, <laughs> he's to the point where he has a full on team. So he has a team of like you know, like Coach T, 30-some people, 40-some people, yeah. and, you know, they're working. But this is one of the reasons why we wanted to do this summit because entrepreneurs don't start out like that. We don't mm -hmm. start out with huge budgets of money. We don't start out with a huge team. Most of us don't start out that way. So let's show people who may be doing it by themselves as, so, as a solopreneur for a little while. Let's help them get to the point where they can afford a team and start in a scale. And then when they do start to scale, what, are the, what do they look for? So that's what, like, that's what this is all about. We're into family empowerment, but we also know it takes individuals to kind of know their stuff and know what to do in order to bring it back to, to the table for the family to be able to utilize. So but um, this is going to be good. 
do you think this was helpful in, in getting an idea of what you want to do? Do you think you're more on track now? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that was my only question. I didn't know if I needed to um, to shorten it to only for because I mean, those are the three things I talk, talk about. So look, oh, it, it wasn't a matter. It was a matter of whether 